Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. Today I'm going to upgrade my power center in my uh, Keystone Cougar. I'm going to swap out the converter charger that's in there with a newer model from the same company. This company's called WFCO. They make a lot of uh, OEM charge converter chargers in rigs and mine is one of them. Now mine is uh, rigs about 10 years old and recently I upgraded to lithium batteries and the charger in this power center doesn't do a very good job at charging my batteries. It's actually made for lead acid batteries so <clears throat> its charging algorithm doesn't work with my lithium very well. Uh, it's, the voltages are wrong so I find uh, over the course of the last two years if I leave the the rig plugged in and just have this charging my batteries they'll only charge my batteries to about 53% and then it'll just sit there because it thinks it's actually charged a set of lead acid batteries full but it's wrong. So recently this company's come out with a new uh, charger that will work with lithium. Uh, they contacted me and asked if I'd like to install it and check it out in my rig so I accepted the offer. So it was sent out to me for free. I didn't pay for it or anything just so you know up front. Uh, this one has actually got their auto detect feature it's a 55 amp, which is what's in there. I have a 55 amp lead acid charger. But this one can auto detect lithium or lead acid and then adjust its charging algorithm on the fly. So I'm going to test it out and see if it's going to work in my system. So I'm going to put it in the same location as the OAM one was, not change any wiring or anything. And I do have a, a set of three uh, line energy lithium type batteries, and we'll see how this performs in comparison with my older uh, same model basically of lead acid uh, charger. Uh, let's pull it out of the box and I'll show you what they sent. So this should look pretty familiar to a lot of RVers, very common arrangement in RVs. You have a distribution center, door opens and get access to the back. And then if you undo the screws you can actually take the cover off and get to the guts. So this is a replacement power center. I don't think I'm going to actually replace the whole plastic piece. I'm just going to reuse the one that's inside my rig because it's basically just the plastic assembly. I don't want to be breaking out all the holes and rerunning all my wires because I really don't need to change any of my uh, AC. This is where the breakers would go in and all the AC wiring. I will change their board. Um, this is your DC distribution board. I'm going to change it because they've already run the wires for me right there and down in here is where the new charger converter charger will live so that's what I'm going to be basically swapping out of my system put the new charger in there and I'm going to swap out this board I'll leave my uh, AC distribution the same and and not use this plastic case let's go in and have a look at the existing system there we are. So you can see they're basically identical as far as the casing goes. I think I might put the new cover on because I like the darker color actually. And so this is the board. I'm going to swap out this DC distribution board and uh, put this one in. I'll just have to change those uh, wires there, make sure I get them in the right connections. And then I'm going to have to take this black wire and this white wire, so that's your positive DC and negative, and put them on the appropriate uh, lugs there. There's white up there, and then the black will go down there. I'll have to pull this uh, converter charger out and uh, undo it from the breaker and the ground and neutral, and uh, install the new one. Shouldn't be too difficult. I think I'll start with the actual uh, board first. Okay, so very important. I've turned off the incoming AC power, the main power cord for the RV. So there's no live circuitry here at all. We're not plugged in. I've also disconnected the battery power in the RV. So there's no power on the DC side either. Um, also, I'm not a certified technician or anything. This should be done by an electrician or a certified technician just so you know that's what they say on the box but 
I'm going to leave this part alone because I don't want to rerun all these wires. This is, a, this is the 120 volt AC side of things. The only thing I have to do is I disconnected the old feed for the, the converter charger. So you got hot and neutral and ground color coded and it's exactly the same. So I just put it in the same spots the, the old one was in. This is the new converter here. On this side now, I'm going to pull this board out and just change everything. Everything's identical as far as colors and everything, and all the tabs are identical. Um, the board is basically identical, though mine had these kind of LEDs here. These have board mount LEDs, a little bit different, um, and a little bit different screws and stuff. So I think I'm going to put their board in just in case it has some kind of effect on charging. I don't really see how it's pretty well exactly the same. I'm going to swap over all the fuses as well when I change all the different load circuits along here. And if you're wondering, these 40 amp fuses, I believe that's for reverse uh, protection in case you were to put your battery leads backwards, it would protect the, the converter. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do is just go and redo all those leads. Okay, so back in place. I reconnected the batteries. Let's check that. 13.46. Looks good. And we'll just check and make sure these fuse things work. Pull a fuse. There you can see a light comes on if you've uh, blown a fuse. And installed the new uh, front piece. Had to relabel things. So we got air conditioner, microwave, general plugs, GFCI plugs, water heater and converter on my AC stuff. And then over here I have bedroom, living room, bath, fans and, and uh, propane detector, uh, tank monitor, refrigerator, stereo, security and outside light, and dining room light. And then there's two extra spots down here where I could add something. And there's actually another breaker hole where I could add something. So that looks pretty good. Color matches our stove a little better, actually. Before I get to a real world test and demo of this thing, let's just have a quick look at the manual. Uh, so there's two modes of operation, the standard lead acid mode, bulk absorption float. It's been around forever. But the lithium mode is what I'm most interested in. So it says uh, you have to uh, at least allow it to go through one full charging cycle so that it can auto detect whether you have lead acid batteries or lithium batteries. If it's detecting that you have lithium batteries, it, it does this sort of thing. Uh, puts out 14.6 volts for bulk mode. Um, and then when the batteries reach their charge, it goes into an absorption mode at 13.6. So it's kind of like kind of like a float mode for lithium. Uh, it has a minimum one hour minimum and four hours max in bulk mode. Uh, if you're not, if you have a battery bank that's larger than 200 amp hours, you'd have to cycle the power to reset the timers. So I guess it's saying the one hour mode is to, to kind of balance the cells in the lithium battery. Then it switches to a an absorption at 13.6 six volts right here so it's kind of designed to automatically take care of your your lithium batteries uh, anyway i will link to a page on their website that has a link to the the product literature the, like the manuals and the brochures if you want to take a deep dive into the technology anyway let's get to it okay this should be a good test scenario we're out boondocking right now and my batteries, my lithium battery bank is down to 17%. Um, I've let it sort of run down and last night was cold. So this would be a good time to uh, test out the, the capabilities of the new charger. I'm going to use my generator to, uh, to, to, as a power source to the AC part of the rig. And we'll see what the, the amperage the charger will put out. Right now my lithium bank is sitting at 13 volts. And we're drawn around 5 amps or so, 5, 6 amps. So we'll go fire up the generator and then we'll go check the amperage on the charger. See if it is truly able to, to put out. I think it's a max 55 amp charger that they gave me. 
Okay, generator on. Threw my 30 uh, amp cord into the RV. Let's go flick the converter on. So I'll flip the breaker here. Hear the generator ramped up. This thing's turning on. Let's watch the amperage here. Like right now we got 28, 29 amps. Oh, just ramped up again. Show me 55.3 amps. A little bit of reflection here, but you can see that there. So yeah, 55 amps. Pretty sweet. I just have that clamped on the DC output that's going into the, the DC distribution here. So with my old uh, OEM converter charger, charger converter, I never saw that. I never saw it go to 55. It usually would go to maybe 30 or 40 amps and actually it would quickly drop. So this is pretty sweet. And on my battery monitor here, it's showing 45, almost 46 amps. The difference is we're actually using amperage right now. We're doing stuff in the RV that's drawing power. Anne's on her actually iMac computer, so she's the inverter is running, drawing energy out of the batteries. But we'll let that run and uh, let the generator run a couple hours here, and I'll come back and let you know how it goes. Just checking in after about an hour and it's been pumping in a solid over 50 amps. Right now we're at 51 amps of charging amperage and my voltage at the converter here is 14.5 volts. At the batteries it's 13.4 so this lets this indicates that it is in a lithium charging mode because if it was in a lead acid algorithm I imagine it would have already dropped down in voltage. And of course the current would have dropped down. So we'll let it go another hour, because that's kind of comparable to what you would get in a, a state or national park where you're allowed to run your generator for two hours. And then we'll uh, see if it uh, stays at a solid 50 amps after the second hour. So we've hit the two hour mark now. Um, charge amperage is 49.6, let's call it 50 amps. It's been pretty solid the whole time. And also the voltage output at 14.5 has been solid. So in this two hour span, we've put about 100 amp hours back into our batteries. I've kind of did some temperature measurements here on this thing and uh, the hottest place on the heat sink that I found was about 90 degrees so it's not even really uh, getting warm at all I'm just barely warm to the touch which is which is pretty good considering it's almost putting out its max output so let's we'll turn that off shut her down you can see the fan continues to run Obviously, it's being powered by the DC side of things. I turned off the AC side. There it is. Only took a maybe 10 seconds for the fan to go down. Well, there you go. The converter charger seems to work as advertised. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Maybe you're buying a new RV. You might want to check if the converter charger has the auto detect feature. You know, you might want to use lead acid and then switch to lithium, so it makes it very easy. You just switch your batteries and it automatically switches over for you. I'm going to continue to test this as we do our snowbird journey for the next several months. And uh, when I get back to an RV park in the spring, I'll use it for a while and come back with an update. Let you know if there's any problems I run into 
I'd say the only negative I can say about it right now is the fan noise can be a little annoying, especially since the power center is here in our living area. And uh, so when it's charging, that, uh, that fan kind of makes quite a bit of noise as it's cooling the unit. Anyway, till next time, Ray from Love You RV. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.